we're talking about whose voice is that? Is it your voice criticizing you or someone else's? Do you regularly hear your voice or that of a parent, teacher, friend, society? How do you release that little voice that isn't yours? Learn how to clear some mental clutter as we continue this month focusing on 10-minute decluttering tips. Does your clutter own you? On Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, we'll teach you how to become aware of your clutter along with action steps to declutter and create the life you desire. Come on, let's get started. I work on asking myself this, whose voice is that? And I also encourage my clients to do the same. I know that I have been influenced by others and at times a little too much. Honestly, I still struggle with fighting and spending time with someone's voice who has been in my head way too much. One of the things I am working on and have spent a lot of effort in releasing is that my mentor's voice. What I learned from the entire experience was to not have hero worship, to not worship teachers anymore. I allowed my teacher to have way too much influence on me, and I allowed it. The thing that is absolutely great about that, though, when I was told what, quote unquote, my truth was, that didn't ring true to me. I'm like, mm -mm, not feeling that. That's right. I'm going to continue down this path and on my journey, what is true to me. And having a little more distance on it, I'm like, wow, I was really caught up in someone else telling me what was right and wrong and should put those in quotes and that it wasn't my voice. It wasn't my journey. So some like that, I was really aware of, but there are other voices that we might be hearing that we're not sure where they come from. It's maybe something that happened to us when we were younger. To the best of my knowledge, the whose voice is that comes from access consciousness. I haven't taken any of their classes and it might be called something differently in another teaching, kind of same concept, just worded differently. I really like whose voice is that though. It's, it just kind of hits it right on the head. The people who taught me this to ask myself were taught by Access Consciousness. So I want to kind of give credit where credit is due. I haven't studied. And when I was doing a little research on this, it looks like they might have tweaked the phrase. I'm passing along what I taught and use, but you know, have fun with it. Feel free to Google and do a little more examination on your own. This week, examine your thoughts emotions, and feelings. Ask yourself, whose voice is that? If it doesn't feel good, it probably isn't your voice. If we're really coming from our soul, our spirit, don't you think it'll feel good? I had an art teacher when I was in junior high who always gave me bad grades and for a long time, I was really afraid to do art because I thought I was just terrible. I discovered when I was a nanny and I was taking, lived in just outside of Boston and I'm like, I have to do something. So I would go into Boston and took some oil painting classes. And I discovered that I'm pretty good. I've got my oil paints recently. I, I need to set aside time. I'm, it might not happen until I get to the beach. Other things that I'm working on that have to get done. But I'm so excited to pick back oil painting up again, because I'm actually pretty good. My mom discovered in her 50s that she's a really good watercolor painter. All the Christmas cards that she does now are her original art. We have original art in our home, and she was invited to do a show. And so she, there's a painting she really loves that we have, and she said, can you box it up, send it to me, and I'll return it. And Tony's like, make sure we get it back. That's my favorite painting. 
my mom has continued to grow in her art and it's awesome to see. And that's something that I want to get back into. So I had to overcome the voice of a junior high art teacher saying, you know what, you kind of stink. And be like, you know what, I'm actually pretty good. And if I got some instruction, I know I could do even more. Losing money because you aren't organized? Tired of spending hours looking for things? Stressed out? Go to reawakenyourbrilliance.com to learn how Julie Caraccio can support you. Do you have something similar in your life where the voice is not yours? Is there something you're struggling with or dealing with right now? Something you're critical about? that might be a good place to start to practice. When you discover it isn't your voice, return to the sender with love. For example, my previous teacher said, you, this isn't going to happen. And so when that comes up for me, and it still does, I say, that's not my truth. And I visualize sending it back to her with love. I always also like to have gratitude that it is coming up to be released. I say something like, I'm grateful that this has come up so I can heal and move forward. It doesn't really matter whose voice it is. Now, in the past, I would have wanted to examine the heck out of this. I'm going to encourage you to not go down that road to discover whose voice it is. Because in the end, does it really matter? What is important is that you heal and release the thoughts, feelings, and emotions that do not belong to you. Now, if it's really important to you, take the time to figure it out. There are always layers, though, so it might be someone else's voice and not who you first think it is. And my main reason for suggesting not spending time on figuring out whose voice it is I don't want you to go down a rabbit hole and get sidetracked and spend all this time trying to figure out, well, who said this to me if it's going to stop you from healing and moving forward? Because sometimes we can get stuck in the story and then we don't move forward. Pay attention if you are picking up the feelings of others. For example, you could be in a great mood and then your negative coworker bops in, and all of a sudden, you're a crank monster. This has zero to do with you. That isn't you, that's someone else's energy that you are picking up or is getting in your field. Remember, you have a choice to decide if it is your voice or someone else's. When that not so great feeling, thought, or emotion comes up, what can you replace it with? I have been doing affirmations daily. Make sure your affirmations are in the present moment. I am, I have, positive, and pack a punch. In addition to the affirmations, you can return to center with love. You can have gratitude in that moment. Check out episode 159, Destroying Your Doubt, from January 2017, if you could use a little more support. Take actions from today's podcast. Spend the next week monitoring your feelings, emotions, and thoughts. When a negative or unpleasant thought comes up, ask, whose voice is that? If it's not your voice, return to center with love and have gratitude. Pay attention when taking on emotions and feelings and thoughts of others in the present. Replace the thoughts, emotions, and feelings that aren't yours with affirmations or whatever rings true to you. On our next episode, we're talking about forgiveness. 
Clearing your clutter allows you to share your gifts with the world. Get your free self-assessment to discover your clutter priority at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. If you've enjoyed Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, please rate, review, and share us.